Welcome to this module about the unscented Kalman filter that you care. The unscented Kalman filter is an alternative to the extended Kalman filter. Whereas the extended Kalman filter was invented in 1960s, the unscented Kalman filter was invented later, in the 1990s. Since it was invented, it has gained a lot in popularity and is hence something that is good to know about. To fully appreciate this module, you should have already watched the module about the Kalman filter. We'll start by reviewing the Kalman filter. We will then derive a more general form of the Kalman filter and end up in the unscented Kalman filter. So the Kalman filter applies to linear models of this kind, where the next stage is the linear combination of the current stage plus process noise. The measurement is a linear combination of the state and some measurement noise. We assume that we know the covariance of both the process noise and the covariance of the measurement noise, and that both the process noise and the measurement noise has a mean zero. From this, the Kalman filter algorithm can be derived. It's a two-stroke engine where we have a time update step where we predict the next state, even the current one, and a measurement update step where we include information from new observations into the state, and that that way you get a better estimate. It's worth noting that when you predict things for one time, you lose information due to uncertainties in uh, models and uh, maneuvers and stuff like that, which is what we will in this term here. And that we then compensate for this by shrinking the covariance again once we have an observation. The linear model in the Kalman filter is nice in many ways, especially if you want to do analytic derivations. It's also well founded in nature because many processes are actually linear. However, there are also a lot of problems where we want to do filtering that are not linear. Uh, an example is the nonlinear measurements that's provided by the radar or the coordinate term dynamics model. Therefore, we extend the model to nonlinear models. And this is the form. It's more or less exactly the same as the linear, except that the linear transformation of the state has been uh, transformed into a generic function of both the state and the process noise. The same thing is true for the measurements, where instead of being a linear combination of the state, the measurement is a generic function of x. Note that the linear model is actually a special case of this. Other than that, we have known covariance of the process and the measurement noise as well as zero mean process and measurement noise. Before we start the derivations on this more general Kalman filter for the nonlinear models, let's re recall the nonlinear transformations of stochastic variables that we discussed earlier. The problem is to give the stochastic properties of Z, which is a function of U, which is also a stochastic variable, with known mean and covariance. We uh, are given the function g, the mean and the covariance of u, and look for the mean and covariance of z. This will be used when we derived this general common filter equations. Now we are ready to derive the time update in this general approximate common filter. The time update is quite straightforward. We simply need to transform the state and the process noise to the next state. If we stack the variables like this, we have the mean x hat k given k and zero, and the diagonal covariance matrix containing the uncertainty and the, or the covariance of the state and the process noise. We then apply the nonlinear transformation and get the, the properties of offset. We can do this in several different ways. The uncentered transform, the Monte Carlo transformation, TT1 or TT2. And that will give us the distribution of the predicted state. And it will be x hat k plus 1 given k and um, p k plus 1 given k. Depending on which transformation we use, we get different filters. To be able to derive the measurement update, we also need to recall lemma 7.1, the one about conditional Gaussian distributions. It states that if x and y are two jointly distributed Gaussian stochastic variables, uh, they are distributed according to this, so mean and covariance, then we can uh, find the conditional 
distribution of x given y with this expression. You should recognize this as part of the measurement update in a normal Kalman filter. Now the measurement update can be derived in the following way. We let the input be the current state and the measurement noise and compute z which is the current state and expected measurement. That would be our g in the uh, nonlinear transformation. If you do this using uncentered transform, the Monte Carlo transformation, the TT1 or TT2, that gives us a mean and covariance for the, the state and the expected measurement. Now applying lemma 7.1, we get an expression for the new mean of the state, which is the previous mean plus the Kalman filter gain times uh, the difference between the obtained measurement and the predicted measurement. And the covariance matrix that is reduced due to the new information. The Kalman filter gain can be computed from the components that we get from the nonlinear transformation. I'll now give the expressions for the uncentered Kalman filter. As you see, the expressions are quite involved, and I'm not going to go through all the details here. But this is what you, you obtain if you apply the uncentered transform in all the steps where we have made nonlinear transformations in the two previous steps. To get the details, please read the textbook. And uh, I'll just highlight the, the idea behind this. So first, we generate sigma points to represent the state and the process noise uncertainty. How to do this? Please consult the module on sample-based nonlinear transforms. So you find all the details about this. Once we have sigma points for the current state, we obtain sigma points for the predicted state by inserting these sigma points into the dynamic model for the problem. With these predicted sigma points, we can then compute the, the mean and the covariance of the state estimates as the weighted mean and the weighted covariance of the uh, sigma points. The measurement update is in many ways similar to the time update step. We start by generating sigma points, this time for the predicted state and the measurement error. We get sigma points for that. With these sigma points, we now compute sigma points for the expected measurement. With these expected measurement sigma points, we compute the mean and the covariance of the expected measurement as the weighted sample mean and the weighted sample covariance of the sigma points. We furthermore compute the cross covariance between x and y as a weighted sample cross covariance. Based on this, we can compute the mean and the covariance of the estimate using uh, lemma 7.1. We have computed all the components needed. I'll exemplify how you can use this in signal systems toolbox in MATLAB uh, with the same example as I've been using for the Kalman filter module. So again, we have a constant velocity model that we measure the position in. Note that you need to convert this linear state space model to nonlinear object before we can apply the uncentered Kalman filter to PKF here. The result is visible to the right. It's the same as you would get for the Kalman filter because the uncentered Kalman filter becomes equivalent to the Kalman filter in terms of the result if the system is linear. And we can also look at the individual states with this command over here. We see that we get a good view of the position of the system, but we are slightly less certain about uh, velocities. And that's because we measure the position and not the velocity, and the information that we get about the velocity is indirect through several observation of positions, which the filter can extract, but of course not as good as with actual measurements of the velocity. I encourage you to actually play around with different filter settings and different filters in this setting to get more familiar with how things are actually working. 
okay to summarize. Um, <clears throat> to summarize, uh, we have shown you a general approximate. To summarize, I've derived a general approximate comma filter framework that can be used on nonlinear models. Uh, the time update is a straightforward application of nonlinear transformation of a stochastic variable. And the uh, measurement update is likewise an application of a nonlinear transformation of stochastic variable, followed by an application of lemma 7.1. In both these steps, a number of different nonlinear transformations can be used, in which case you derive different filters. And if you use the uncentered transform in both of these cases, you get the uncentered comma filter. If you would use TT1, you would get the extended comma filter. If you use TT2, you would get the extended comma filter of the second order, and so on. There are many possibilities to pick the transformation that is best for the, the step. One benefit of the uncentered comma filter is that you only need to be able to evaluate functions to implement it. Not as in the case of the extended comma filter, where you have to somehow obtain derivatives, either analytic or numerical. This could be a benefit if your system is complex and the derivatives are difficult to come by. It's also interesting to notice that the uncentered comma filter captures some of the second order effects of the system, but not all of them. So it's something in between the ETF1 and the ETF2. Finally, uh, to read more about this, have a look in a textbook in chapter 8. And that's the part about uncentered transform versions.